Welcome to another edition of Belmont Journal. I'm Steve Rosales, your host, and with me today is a relative newcomer here to the Belmont scene, Jennifer Hewitt, Belmont's newest assistant town administrator slash finance director. Jennifer, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. It's nice to see you here. So nice to see you. So, you know, I went up to the town hall to uh, see Ms. Garvin for some business, I don't know, in the middle of the summer. She was on vacation, so out popped Ms. Hewitt. I had never met her. She was very helpful then, and I'm sure she will continue to be helpful uh, as we go forward. Uh, so we've only met once for that one brief time. So welcome to the show, and uh, here's an opportunity to introduce yourself for those that don't know to uh, actually our new financial guru, or guruette, if that's the feminine of it, <laughs> uh, here in town, something we've never had before. Right. So welcome, welcome. So, so you're recently hired. When did you get here? I started in at the end of May, so I'm just over three months. Just over three months, just at the time where people empty the town and school's out and no one sees you, but now they're all back. Yes. It's now being what? Uh, school's been in session for two days now, so people are back. And I'm sure uh, you were knee deep. So, uh, did were you? Are you local? Did you did you grow up locally here? No, I am originally from from the Midwest. I moved to Massachusetts in 1994, and my first apartment was in Belmont. So I was over on Hull Street in a triple decker and uh, took the 73 bus into Harvard Square. Um, and one of my bus mates was Mike Widmer, and we remember each other from that that time. So it feels like a bit of a homecoming now that I am, uh, you know, back in Belmont, and things are feeling very familiar. In fact, I still have my primary care um, doctor here in Belmont, so it's pretty straightforward. So, so from the Midwest, and then I think we were chatting before when we chatted yesterday uh, on this, you went to school in Indiana. I did. I did. And then you left Indiana to come to, well, what I'll call the big city here on the <laughs> east, Midwestern girls. So what brought you here all the way from uh, Indiana to here? Oh, well, uh, there was a job opportunity, so I followed my, my husband at that point, and uh, he was an engineer for a non-big dig um, firm. Or he, was, he was an engineer um, for a firm that was working on um, geotechnical um, engineering. Um, in fact, he worked with Mark Haley at that point. Really? So that's interesting to see Mark and Joel Mooney um, a little bit, you know, after that. It's... It it's, was meant to be, apparently. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then, of all things, I got a job working in the Massachusetts legislature, working as a staffer for the Transportation Committee, and was going down, I was tracking big dig finances at that point. Ooh, so, big uh, numbers. Yes, big numbers, <laughs> big numbers. Too big to many people. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> But then uh, I ended up getting my master's degree at the time, and I once I was you know, done with that, I was trying to figure out what was a good landing point, and I ended up at the governor's budget office, and I started under Governor Salucci, and I worked for Governor Swift and Romney, and then ended up under Governor Patrick, and did some other things with the state government you as well. You must have been very good to survive all those administrations. It was uh, it was definitely a, a love to be you know be part of all of the all of the budget crunching at that so level. So you went through let me see three Republican governors and one uh, one Democratic probably more liberal governor, uh, mm -hmm. and you did all those budget cycles. Did you find the budgets to be much different? Quite frankly, depending on on political philosophy of the governor at the time. Or there's a lot of set costs. You know, honestly, there are a lot of built-in costs. It's it's very difficult. I mean, even with a forty billion dollar budget, you figure that there's got to be a lot of sway here and there. But a, a big chunk of the costs are payroll. They, they are what they are. That's set. Yes, you're Similar either going to the town. run the con run the programs the way you need to or not. So, uh, eleven budget cycles on the state level. Mm -hmm. Have to work in the big dig with. I'm sure those spreadsheets were enormous, uh, and then. Uh, before you came here, you worked for a neighboring community, did you not? I did. I did. So I, when I left the state uh, state government, I ended up working for a year in the Lexington Public Schools in their business office, and then I became the budget officer in Lexington for, and I was there for six budget cycles. In Lexington. Mm hmm And and okay, and now you're here in Belmont. What brought you here? What I was am. so attractive, other than Hull Street and Mike Widma and Joel Mooney and uh, Mark Haley, and of course yep. the seventy-three bus. Of course, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, what 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 
attracted you here to come sort of home again, quite right. frankly. I, I, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you know, honestly, I was ready for a new challenge, and there's um, some fiscal housekeeping to be done, you know, here. And so I was, I was definitely um, interested in in making a difference. And uh, at Patrice um, and I really clicked during the interview process, and I really feel like that's um, been coming to fruition. I was ready to ready to be able to put what I've known and uh, really apply it and make a difference. So did you find the budget, uh, had, did you think that you accomplished all you wanted to accomplish over there in Lexington? I had. I had. I had actually rebuilt their entire budget process um, with using a new budget tool that I'm now implementing here in Belmont. And uh, we redid their, their capital process a bit to really strengthen it. And I'm looking forward to doing the same here. Um, and they're, they're in really good financial condition, and that wasn't really that much of a challenge um, at that point, but there's definitely some fiscal constraints, more fiscal constraints here, so be, be interested uh, how, in how those so? conversations. How so? I mean, it's a neighboring community. We often, mm -hmm. uh, on a lot of, uh, on a lot of uh, comparisons, right. whether it be schools or this, or mm -hmm. a lot of, on a lot of comparison uh, categories. Right. We compare ourselves. We in Belmont compare ourselves to Lexington quite of often, course. along with some others. But Lexington mm -hmm. seems to be a comparable community. But they're really not fiscally. Right. Uh, how right. do you find the difference between the two? You know, I think that the biggest one is where um, Lexington has a, a much larger new growth uh, every year. The way that the 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 way that municipal finance works in Massachusetts is there's proposition two and a half. So you have your base tax levy that's worth a certain amount, and that can grow by two and a half percent every year, and that's pretty straightforward. But then if someone does any enhancements to their properties, that can get added to the extra, mm -hmm. and that's a new growth factor. Where here in Belmont, that's around a million dollars a year. In Lexington, they budget at um, about two, almost three million, and it actually usually comes in significantly higher from that, and particularly because they've had a lot of commercial growth in recent years along Hartwell Ave and the Shire, which is now Takeda, um, has grown for them, and that's that's really provided a, a bit of a bonanza financially for them to be able to support not just their schools, but you know other other things that the town is looking to looking to accomplish. Well, it does. We we have we are a victim. We are a we, ha we are the beneficiary of our location and size, mm -hmm. and we are also the victim of our location and size. Uh, size probably being um, major difference. I mean, I look at the route too, I forget what the boundary is, but uh, you know, when you mentioned Shire or whatever it is now, that's the one on sort of Route 2, 128, that big right. campus, all those mm -hmm. things back there. That's on the other side of Route 2, which is Lexington. Yes. I, I wish we could almost redraw the, the line when we redistrict and just, you know, because that's just easy pickings, quite frankly, because it doesn't seem to affect the residential neighborhoods. It seems to be out there. I'm sure Whereas, the, the neighbors would, would disagree. Well, that's but, probably you know. true, but yeah. I, I don't mm -hmm. think there's, there's uh, well, okay, on the other side, but, mm -hmm. but that's probably true, probably true about anywhere, but. Right. Belmont seems to have, well, we have three little commercial centers, and we're, what, four square miles, and there's not much to put stuff. So, uh, mm -hmm. well, we wish you luck in that particular regard. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all right, so <clears throat> you told me yesterday you, you really like spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at your reaction. I mean, it, okay, it, it's not my particular stick. There's a reason why I'm not an accountant. But... Yes. Uh, uh, but okay, so you're drawn to that. That seems to be your shtick. You're bringing all that experience on the state and on the municipal level here to Belmont. Yes. You start with a clean slate. You're the first finance. So you really are. You're the assistant town administrator slash finance director. Yes, sir. That's mm -hmm. your, okay, not mm -hmm. an and. It's, a, it's an actual <laughs> slash. Okay. Uh, uh, I joke, but okay. So what do you do? What's... What, what, you came in to do what? What is your scope or function? Yeah. Tell the people, we've never had this position because right. we've sort of had a hodgepodge of budgeting process. Well, but, I think what- But what, this is new. I think the, the benefit here is just that there's someone at a high enough of a level. I feel empowered that I'm able to 
make some decisions to, to streamline things administratively. So there's a way to, to just be able to, for instance, being able to restructure the way that we're tracking our budgeting and that way that we're doing our budgeting. We're, we're rolling out a new budget model this, this year that it's not really all that sexy, except unless you're you know, a spreadsheet person like me, but it's one of those things where we're, it's gonna make it easier for departments to submit their budget requests and for us to be able to review it and update it in a, in a consistent way. And any time we can save staff time administratively, I think it's a win just because then they can focus on their other things. And staff are definitely spread very thin. Um, in the community. So, um, and then just being able to identify other areas where, you know, the, the thing that, that Patrice and I really are, don't like to hear is, well, we've always done it that way. Let's see if we can look at it a different way. That whenever you hear something like that, you know that it's time to just look at it and just confirm that it's still the right way to do it. So that's what we're, we're working on more on, on an administrative level because if you're if you've already if you've already always you know processed a certain payroll or you've always used that vendor or something like that maybe there's a, a reason to look at it a little differently so that you can achieve an efficiency or create a better outcome. Okay, well I I'll confess to being one slow to change. I've been here. I think I was. <laughs> when we were chatting yesterday. Uh, I've been here in Belmont now going on 62 years. Okay. So, and I've been in the town meeting. I've lived here. My kids have gone through here. I'm one of five. We all went through. So it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and, but the town has worked. I mean, change for the sake of change doesn't excite me. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. For all of its perceived problems, Mm -hmm. or bureaucratic or difficult road to get to some right. places, we're still a sought-after community. Right. The home prices have never been higher. Mm -hmm. The schools are consistently rated top, not just in the state, but in the country, if you look at certain U.S. news sticks to, next to mind as being some of the actually top in the entire country. Yep. Um, people are crawling over each other to buy overpriced houses here in town. Our roads still stink, but the AAA bond rating, financial stability, and we seem to get it done, despite all that, since 1859. Mm -hmm. So uh, the new reports and the new way, I don't know, I'm slow to change. So maybe that makes me a dinosaur. I'm sure many people are chuckling, uh, but that's... But if it worked, I'm, I'm really, if, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it type guy. Mm. Well, I think so. What, your new set of eyes. So there you go. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, honestly, as an example, just on an administrative level, it's where you have somebody that is validating and doing a two finger on a on a report where they have a list of a thousand people here and a bill here, and they're confirming that we're paying the right information that we're paying the right information. Mm -hmm. uh, paying the right amounts. Okay. But I have a way to look at it so that we're getting the data together and then comparing the information and getting it getting the results within minutes instead of within days. So it's that type of thing that I'm that I'm talking about in terms of streamlining. And if there's that's just more of an administrative side of things. If there's other ways that we can do to just collaborate better between depart between departments or even be able to, to share tasks more easily, that's worth at least considering. And it's it can be easier to do that if um, if everyone's reporting to the same to the same area as okay. opposed to separate. Well, that, that, well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so you oversee as finance director, mm -hmm. assistant town administrator slash finance director. Right. Uh, you oversee what department? So what functions? Well, at this point, uh, the the goal would be to have there be a com consolidated finance team that would be. You know, the Collins Center talked about having a, a combined, you know, having the finance director oversee the assessing office, the treasurer's office, and uh, and the town and the town accounting office. At this point, all of all three of those are independent, and I'm working with them. Um, we have a regular finance team meeting set up, and we're collaborating on on joint projects. Um, that we that we need to work on. So at this point, I don't have any direct reports relating to that. I do have a budget analyst that he and I have been working on 
the budget process at this point, but otherwise I am also, that's where the assistant town administrator piece comes in as okay. well. And, you, and you're working with accounting and the treasurer's office, and I'm assuming the assessors it's to some extent. Mm -hmm. is, is your involvement or your, new, your now involvement, is that something different that hasn't been done before in the town? Uh, I think it hasn't been as formal, as formalized, and having someone with a finance background so that I can see something and say, that doesn't make sense to me, you know, like, and just to ask the questions, because I know that, that it's been organized in a different way, or that others, uh, other, other communities, either Lexington or others, um, have approached things in a, in a different way. I mean, yesterday I was reviewing a bill and I, you know, an invoice, and I, you know, kind of questioned why this account was paying it instead of another, and we we kind of realigned that. And it's just a matter of asking the question. Okay, mm -hmm. well, there, there you go. You know, that's quite often. I'm an attorney by trade, and it is the question that a lot of times you, that you get to ask. So you mentioned, uh, so you do have a finance background. Mm -hmm. You went to school in Indiana, in Valpo. Valparaiso, yes, right? Yes, very it. well done, well, yes. Well, I had to remember, she chastised me yesterday. I've always known it as Valparaiso when I pick them for March Madness, and they might win a game, and then they then they break my heart, and, and I don't win, but that's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. But it's Valparaiso. Yes. What town's that in in Indiana? Uh, is it Valparaiso, Indiana? Yeah. That's the name of the town? <laughs> yes, it okay. is. Okay. <laughs> so. It's also a town in Chile, Chile, so... <clears throat> Well, I'm not going to mix that up. It was, you didn't go to the Chile campus, no, right? No, I did not. I always knew that as Chile, but I guess it's Chile now, too. So uh, I got to get rid of the Boston accent, <laughs> I guess. What can I say? But, uh, okay, so you came here. You have a degree or whatever it is in finance, I guess, from Valparaiso. You came here to get your master's. You mentioned the Collins Report. You got your master's um, uh, at, at UMass Boston, I think. I you told did. Me. I did. Yes. And had involvement with the Collins people. I did. Yes. So I, my mm. degree. So I did get a, a degree in political science in from Valparaiso. Okay. And uh, then um, was I have a master's in public administration okay. uh, from the Collins Center at UMass Boston. It's the same Collins Center that just put this report that now it we're is. dealing with. It is again coming home. It is. It's like mm -hmm. it's fate. It's mm -hmm. it's pure circle. But, Absolutely. Uh, so. You know, we talked about that, and, and we're starting, I, I had Mark Plow, the chair of the Board mm -hmm. of Selectmen, uh, in that chair I don't mm -hmm. know, last week or whenever we talked about that, and he was talking about the Collins Center and the Collins Report, and they were starting to analyze it. Yes. The biggest thing is the budget finance director job, and I guess, I don't know when it came out, whether you came on board pre-Collins Center or post-Collins Center, but... That was one of their big things, have right. somebody in your position to, to, to do your function that you've described. Exactly. Um, it had a lot of other changes in it suggested by those mm -hmm. people. Some were contra controversial, some are, you know, uh, and again, I'm a not a big change guy. But the one thing there, all these things there, I'm waiting for the answer, is how will that save the town money? You mentioned efficiency, and I guess right. indirectly you can say that saves money through efficiency. But I'd love to have that kind of either monetized or measured. Right. As to if you in, if you in, if you invoke or implement all these nineteen changes to the extent you ever yeah. did, if you did all this, what would you realize on the bottom line? Why is it worth doing that? We can save that for another day, but it's out mm -hmm. there, and because it has some major suggested changes to the way things have been done since 1859 here in Belmont, <laughs> MA. It's to a dinosaur like me. It just is. What can I say? It is. Uh, but I'd love to have that calculation. I think that's what was missing. Right. Unless I, you can figure out at some point how to monetize. Yeah. You know, I think that the, that's the difficult part because really what's happening is that because of some of the some of the structures that we, some of the things that we are doing that are slowing us down aren't allowing us to do other things. So, well, we won't necessarily be saving any money, but if we're able to minimize the amount of time on just some perfunctory things that are taking more time than they should, then we have more time to do other things and maybe we don't need to add staff to do those functions. We can just absorb it within, but it makes it difficult for us to do those things if we still have to just pay the light bill, you know, it, just to keep the lights on. Uh, it's now, it's, what is it, September 9th, 
We're in the middle of the 20. We've already done the 2023 budget. So the 2024 budget. Right. Okay. You're into it up to your elbows, I'm sure. Just starting. Whole new process. Yes. Tell us about this whole new process. This is a whole new way of doing things. Right. What are we going to expect? Right, right. So the, the basic premise is that we'll be starting with a series of budget summits. And those summits will kick off next Thursday. So we have the select board, the school committee, the warrant committee, and <laughs> the capital committee uh, that is still in transition as we wait for the attorney general to approve the, the newly approved capital committee. Mm -hmm. uh, they will all be meeting in up in the art gallery. Uh, and we'll have a hybrid op option so that folks can be remoting in to, uh, to, to attend and they can also be watching it from, from the public. But uh, the, the whole premise is that we'll start the whole budget process a lot earlier than we have in the past. We're going to focus primarily on, uh, on revenue and seeing what's available for, the, for revenue and try to make our budget projections starting from that so that they can then inform the further, the further decisions around expenses. Obviously, there's a lot of policy discussions, you know, that will happen. Um, where you, we've been using a lot of one-time revenues and continued use of one-time revenues. Eventually, those dry up, and so we'll have to strategize about what to do when that happens. But trying to project, not just pro, um, trying to project for the long term in terms of not just looking at next year, but how does next year's budget impact, you know, year two and three and four and five as well so that we can have making long-term projections is a lot more stable and uh, it allows us to make better decisions and have better continuity um, from one year to the next. So the series of budgets, so are you running the meeting? Who's running the meeting? Who is it? It's called by who? I guess yeah. a posted meeting, right? It is a posted meeting. It's a joint meeting between all four committees. And, okay. uh, you know, the agenda is pretty straightforward. We've, you know, already started with a, with some budget projections for FY24. I mean, okay. obviously, they're very preliminary at this point because we haven't even been through a, a full quarter, you know, in FY23 on which to update our numbers. Um, but uh, the the plan is that uh, Patrice and I will probably be you know tag teaming as as we're going moderating through the presentation. or at least whatever it is that right. they're running the meeting. I, that's right. what I mean. Oops. We have a lot, a lot of, of information. A lot of information. A lot of bodies. A lot of people. Over. A lot of departments. All mm -hmm. at all at the table at the same time. So, right. Right. Uh, so and that's interesting because you said I had, as I said I had the chair of the board of uh, the select board. I'm still old school, but the select board Mark Polo there, and he was saying it's a new way. They're going to do a budget, not from what you need, from an expense side first, but what do we have for money? Right. Similar to my regular home budget. This okay. is what I have in the pot. I never thought it was that difficult to figure out what's in the pot and then spend what you got in the pot. But, but apparently that's not the way we've done it. So that seems to be a more logical way of doing things. Absolutely. Except when you find there's not enough money. Well, and that's... that's <laughs> <laughs> Which is always the way. But, you know... And those get to be very, they're very difficult conversations. Well, that'll so. be, well, you got to make the, make the case to the public. I mean, we're all expecting, we don't like it. We voted one down. We as the town, right. the collective, uh, the collective we voted down an override last time, rather substantially with right. a loud thud. Yes. So, uh, uh, and we'll see where it goes, but they have to, you have to make the case. Town needs to make the case. Absolutely. So we have a budget summit next Thursday. If this gets on the air by then, September 15th, like probably around 7 o'clock. Look at the town website and look on the calendar. That's correct. Right? That's what we find. Mm -hmm. And it'll be hybrid. If you want to attend, it's up in the uh, third floor of the uh, Homer building, the art gallery. And uh, there's a hybrid thing, thanks to Belmont Media. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, Jeff Hansel and the crew here, it's going to be uh, on TV. Yes, absolutely. 2130 on your Verizon. I can't speak for Comcast, but 2130 is high def. There you go. <laughs> so uh, uh, there we go. So in a couple minutes, so you have two children. You mm -hmm. told me that you're an empty net. You're going to be an empty nester, or I, you are yes, an empty nester. I am an empty nester. Did, they were home. For, they're both in college. Yes. And yes. They, you, they were home for the summer. 
Yes, and it was lovely to have them, but I'm happy to have my to my space back as well. <laughs> I think I joked if they asked you for money yet, have they run out of money? <laughs> They've been in college probably for about two weeks. Have they run out of money yet? Unfortunately, yes. So yeah. You know, <laughs> thank God we didn't have Venmo back when I was when my kids were in school because you know you had to go. We had joint accounts. I had to go to the bank and put. There was a set amount, but now Venmoing and you get instant money. So uh, what can I say? But good luck with that. Thank what you. What do you do for fun? We got about a minute or two. You can't just be all spreadsheets. Oh, I'm not. I mean, spreadsheets are fun. Don't get uh, don't get well, me wrong. Okay, it's but... a different kind of fun, I guess. But... <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I, uh, I have a dog that I adore, and I live close to some conservation land, and I'm in there all the time. In fact, I was running in there this morning, so I was happy to, to be able to do that. That's nice. Yeah. Good. So you run, you dig your dog, you do some things. Mm -hmm. you garden or anything, or else ski? I, I like to putter around in my garden. I like to, to travel. I like to go hiking and kayaking and, you know, lots of lots of outdoor activities. Travel. Skiing, what's your for bucket, sure. What's your bucket list destination? Oh, you know, I I think the next thing I really want to do is Machu Picchu. Oof. You know, I could ask that question to a thousand people. I don't think people would have said Machu Picchu. But I'm going to look at that myself, maybe. <laughs> maybe we'll meet there. Uh, anyway, uh, it's been great. Nice Time has gone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to do this again. It wasn't torture, I hope. <laughs> but, uh, but there you have it. Belmont Journal with our newest town Assistant Town Administrator slash Finance Director, Jennifer Hewitt. She's been here since May. You'll see her at the, at the uh, Selectman's table, I guess, now. Absolutely. You'll see her at the budget meetings. She's the new financial guru at here in Belmont. I wish you much luck. I wish you much success. As a resident, taxpayer, someone involved, uh, I wish you nothing but the best. Wonderful. So good Thank luck. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks for that. coming. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Well, there you have it. Uh, another edition of Belmont Journal in the books. I'm Steve Rosales, your host. Thank our executive producer over there, Joanna Zuvalis, and of course, uh, Cracker Jack staff and Jerry Meserve in the back, and Jeff Hansel. Uh, again, I'm Steve Rosales. Until next time, take care.